Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors YouTube channel. Anybody who's familiar with the channel already knows that one of my very favorite knife builders is Mike Wallace from Wallace Edged Tools. And I'll tell you primarily why I like his knives as one of the best outdoor knives on the market because they're tough high quality comfortable handles and he uses phenomenal steels to build his knives from his some of his geometries on his knives just lend themselves to outdoor use especially in the military and combat use okay so, you guys stay tuned. I'm going to show you all these knives, some of the sheath systems, and we'll talk about Mike Wallace and his knives and why I like them so much. So, please, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, so, no, I don't have one of every knife that he builds, okay? I still don't have a Spear 2. Every time I order a Spear 2 from Mike, somebody buys it off of me, <coughs> alright? So, the last one that I had commissioned for myself, Spear 2, got sold pretty quick, alright? I didn't even get a chance to get it in the, in the woods. His Spear 2 is one of my favorite designs that he builds. And I'm sorry that I don't have one here. Um, <clears throat> but, I will be getting one. So, Mike, if you're watching this. Got something in my eye. Okay, so. What are we going to start off with? Wh which knife? Um, uh, now, Mike Wallace... <clears throat> Uh, four or five years ago contacted me and said uh, hey Doug I would like to put your sheath systems on my knives for guys who want Kydex I said, sure thing no problem and this is what I do with every knife maker that contacts me I said build me a knife so I know what I'm getting into right he said no problem I'll build you a knife so he did one more than that. He said, why don't you come out here to my shop? And I did. And he built me a knife right there. Right? While I was there. And that is this one right here. Okay? This is his Field Series 1. Outdoor Series 1. Either the Field Series or the Outdoor. I think it's the Field Series 1 or something. He built this one for me. I said, I need a necker. He said, what do you want? I said, I want a necker. So he built it right there. And he gave me his, he don't do this anymore, his textured jig. No, I'm sorry. This is called his meteor finish. He doesn't do it anymore. Okay? Now he does a textured jig pattern. Okay? Which is a little different. Okay? Um, but he doesn't do this meteor pattern anymore. This was a little more uniform than his textured jig pattern. Okay? Very comfortable knife, not too heavy. Um, CPM 154, which is 
probably my favorite stainless steel. Okay? Very nice knife. Sharp 90 degree spine. It's got a clip point. Um, you know, I change all the edges on every knife that I <coughs> purchase and or acquire. I change the edge to my edge, the one that I like. And I call it a low shouldered convex edge. Okay? Um, that's just a bunch of words for a convex edge. That's the, a cross between a factory V edge like this, right? And a convex edge like this, right? It's a cross between those two, right? It gives me great slicing ability, right? More so than either one of them, right? Um, well, not really. But what it really does is it's a very strong edge that allows me to slice well. That, that's a better way to put it. Because, in my opinion, the ability of a knife lies in its ability to slice various materials evenly, uh, you know, precisely. And that's what this edge does for me while still being very strong. Um, so it's much stronger than a Scandi edge. Uh, it's stronger than a regular factory edge because it's got more meat behind it. Um, and I just, you know, it's a great edge. And I'll teach it to you if you want me to. If you're interested in my low shoulder convex grind, I'll teach you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it. It's not hard. All right, it's not hard. Um, I would imagine there are guys out there already doing it, right? They just don't call it what I call it. Anyway. All right, so there's the knife that he built for me, all right? My very first Mike Wallace knife. Now, he also gave me an older model Spear II, which I ended up selling to a friend of mine, okay? Um, and I, I asked his permission because I wanted a brand new spear too. I, he redesigned his knives. Some of the some of the knives that are on his site, he redesigned them. There are o older models to those designs now, and I wanted a brand new, uh, newly designed spear too. So I let that one go, um, and I did tell him. I said, "Is it okay if I get rid of this?" He said, "Fine, no problem." You know what I mean? He's not like that. You know what I mean? But still, I, uh, I respect him and honor him enough to ask him first, okay? So, he did build me the Spear II, and that one got sold. And I said, I said, this is probably going to get sold, Mike, is that all right? Yeah, no problem, blah, blah, blah. So he's going to build me another one. I, I want one to actually keep, okay? Um, but, like I said, you know, guys see it, and they're like, Doug, I'll give you a blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, all right, fine. You know, because they really want these things. And he's got a fairly long wait for his knives. Um, it could be anywhere from six months to a year before you get one of his custom knives. Because these are all custom. And, I, and I'll show you what I mean, okay? Some people would classify his knives as semi-custom, but they're not, okay? He does, um, you know... Uh, sheets of runs, right, has them cut out, water jetted out, right, but as far as the, the, the grinds and how big the knife is and the color of the scales and whether you want textured jig pattern or you want something like this maybe on your, your handle or whatever, all custom work. So that takes time. Plus, he's also a full-time prototype maker for cold steel, okay? So all of the uh, new knives that you see cold steel come out come out with every year, Mike had a hand in designing them, most of them. He also works with a partner as well who does that with him. Uh, Mike's more of a, a, a fixed blade guy, fixed blade knives, and Andrew Demko, is the partner that he works with, is more of a folder guy. Right, he's got a, a folder 
uh, business on the side, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that is apart from cold steel. And Mike has Wallace Edged Tools, where, you know, on his off time, he will build you a badass knife, okay? So, anyway, um, and why do I like his knives? Because, honestly, they are the strongest, most comfortable, and, like, badass-looking knives on the market, as far as I'm concerned. Now, that word badass, everybody has their own definition of what that is, okay? Um, it, it, I, have, I look at knives in a variety of ways, each knife in a variety of ways. It's got to be comfortable, strong, durable. I, I want the best out of a knife that I can possibly get because I may very well have to bet my life on that tool in the field, right? And, you know, uh, having served in Special Forces, uh, you know, that it goes with the territory, man. You're, the mission success depends a great deal on your gear, your equipment, and your knowledge of how to use it. We just had corn for dinner, and we have this thing here at the house where we look for the best sweet corn we can find. And the stuff we had tonight was the bomb. I mean, the bomb. Sweet, and, it, and when, you, when you bite into it, it pops, right? Oh, man, whew. So we had pizza, corn, and salad. That's one of my favorite meals, actually. My sister makes the best pizza. It's got like a sweetness to it, the sauce. Oh, I wonder I'm gaining weight. Okay, so back to the knives. Um, so let's see what we got here. Uh, what are we going to look at first? I showed you the necker, right? Here's the sheet that I built for it, okay? Now this, this necker sheet is going on, I don't know, four years old now, I guess. Uh, maybe a little older. Um, and this is... Um, ATAX Law Enforcement, LE, ATAX LE, with a uh, Cryptek TIE Fine Shore Up plate on the front with our logo, right? Logo in there. Um, flip out ferro rod on the back. And yeah, they're okay. It's cool. Uh, I can make you a necker oops, with a flip out ferro rod on the back. It doesn't hurt to wear it. That ferro rod on the back doesn't hurt anything. I mean, I don't notice it. You know what I mean? Most of the time when I'm in the woods, it's on the outside of my shirt anyway. But even if you put it in, it, it's not that bad. Nope. At least I don't think it is. And I got these quick clip, you know, these quick snap uh, things that for you guys who are uh, <clears throat> worried about somebody choking you with the lanyard of your necker, it, it can't happen with my systems because... They put about 30 pounds of pressure on it, and it pops, okay? But just remember, if they grab your knife, then they got your knife, okay? So, there's something to think about, okay? So there's that. What's next? Okay, so Mike Wallace actually builds some of my designs as well, okay? I'm not a knife maker. I wish I was. I would, in a heartbeat, if I wasn't doing Kydex sheath systems and into other stuff, I would be a knife maker. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. Okay? Because I think I would be really good at it. I think. Okay? Um, so I design knives, and I let other makers reap the benefits of those designs. Okay? <clears throat> uh, and Mike Wallace is one of those knife makers who makes three of my designs, okay? He makes, uh, now I'll, I'll explain how it goes here in a second. Uh, he makes the Delta Whiskey Backcountry. This is the first one ever made, right here, okay? He's made a slew of these, a lot in the last four years, okay? This is my answer to a wilderness survival knife, right? A one tool option if that's what you're into okay um, 
Now you're more than welcome to look at it and say, oh no, there's no way. Look at that, my brother. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Right? I use this in the field. This is a badass knife that does everything I need it to do and does it efficiently. It's strong, comfortable heel. Everything I like in a knife is right here. Right? It's got a nice generous belly for skinning if you need to, or food prep, or whatever. <clears throat> right? Very strong tip in case you have to pry. Um, you, you can even use this as a combat knife. Okay? This is a beefy combat knife. Alright? Um, <clears throat> very strong tip. In combat, anything goes. Right? Anything goes. You, you, you could have to do anything with your knife survive, fight, whatever, okay? Um, it's got a very strong tip for, you know, prying if you have to. And, you know, in the military, guys in the military do things with their knives that other guys probably wouldn't do, okay? Um, because, you know, well, you know how it is. It's just sometimes you got to be rough with your shit, with your gear, right? You know, if the mission dictates that you got to accomplish this particular task and your knife can do it for you but you got to be rough with it you're probably going to do it all right um <clears throat> anyway choke up choil turns this you know six inch blade into a four inch blade i mean you can really choke up on this thing okay and get some finer tasks or choke back chop right this is a hell of a chopper for the size knife that it is it's not a huge knife, but it is beefy. It's a beefy knife. And that's what I intended it to be. A beefy wilderness survival knife. Okay? There it is. That's the backcountry. That's one of my designs. Now, every design that I give to a maker to make for other people, he, you know, he makes them for other people too, um, is more of a collaboration between myself and the builder because every every builder every knife maker has his own spirit that he puts into and in how he builds his knives <clears throat> and it's a collaboration really between me and them so with Mike and I it's a collaboration right uh, he had a lot to do with the handle of this knife uh, when I first designed it it was a little bit different and he, you know, like tuned it up, right? Dialed it in. So there's that. That's the backcountry, right? Nope, the whiskey backcountry. Here's another one. This is called the BMF, basic multifunction. Okay? This belongs to a client. I'm getting ready to put some skin on it. Um, actually building a leather elite for this one in brown alligator. It's just, this, this is going to be badass, guys. Uh, I'm waiting for the hide now. But this is the BMF, um, and this is modeled after one of my old designs called the BMF-1. <clears throat> it's not sold anymore. Um, this is its latest iteration, okay? There it is. The BMF. It's uh, basically a modern French trapper. How's that? Got a nice, generous curve to the to, to the uh, the belly of the knife the edge um, this is a saber grind he can also do a standy if you need it um, Mike's very good at what he does um, it's got a thinner point for you know drilling out whatever you know it, it, all knives are different in what they're good at this is a good bushcraft style knife okay It's giving you a good look at these things, guys, right? Because guys want to see knives. They want to see them. And on this channel, you're going you're gonna to see a boatload of knives. I think I show more knives on my channel than anyone else that I know of, right? If there's somebody else who shows more knives, let me know. I want to know who it is, all right? I'm talking about different knives, right? I show a lot of different knives. I mean, hell, I get two or three of them every day through the mail for clients and generally if there's a if it's a new knife that I haven't seen or I haven't seen lately I'll show it right yeah 
He has all types of handles, too. He's got smooth um, G10. He likes to work with G10. He, it's, it's, that's his thing, G10. It's a strong, resilient handle material, uh, just like my Carta is strong, resilient, weatherproof, right? So there's that one. This is his textured jig pattern. Um, this is my favorite design for the handles. Matter of fact, my personal one, this one here, is is that design. This is my personal BMF. And it goes in this sheath here. I actually made this one a piggyback. I have a quick quick release, right? Um, Uh, piggyback on it and it's in the SE Zula 2 right on this particular knife it, it works well with this uh, system okay and then to put it back on you just lift the tab a little bit put it into the tech lock clip it on okay and it's it's pretty stable it's not going anywhere guys um, but you don't have to undo any screws to take it off you just done right and you put it on your belt or use it as a necker or whatever you want to do, right? Um, surprisingly enough, I don't sell very many of these, and I'm wondering why. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a hell of a system, right? Um, it, it does cost a little more. It's a pain in the butt to make this clip because it all has to be done by hand. I have to use really thick Kydex. I mean, you know, like really thick stuff, right? Anyway, so there it is. There's the system. Um, yeah, my normal stuff. Standalone, fine diamond rod, uh, ferro rod, live fire. Three different ways to put a clip on. You got your tabby dangler. You know, all that. All right. This is a uh, chocolate brown Raptor. Raptor. Kind of a leather look Kydex with uh, Cryptek Highlander. There's that one. Uh, okay, here's one. This is a uh, client's back country, okay? Now this one's a lot different than mine, okay? And this is what this is what makes it custom. He can do this kind of stuff with your handles, right? You work with him like you work with me to build a sheath for it. So he builds the knife for you. This is a completely custom knife and sheath system, all right? You work with him to build the knife, and, you know, any way you want them. This one's different than this, okay? This one's a little wider than this. It's a little longer. It's a little beefier. You know what I mean? He can do that. Add, subtract, lengthen, you know, that kind of stuff for you. I don't mind if you change my design a little bit. It's still a backcountry, all right? And then uh, here's the sheath system he wanted for it. Right now, just remember, okay? Um, why this is a wide blade? I mean, you're talking two inches or so, maybe maybe more. Um, yeah, it's uh, two two and a quarter inches wide. That is very wide for a knife blade. Very wide, and I did that on purpose. There's a reason for it, okay? Um, so if you have a wide blade, you can have a wide sheath. It's just inevitable. It's no way around it. Okay? This one's Baldrick Carry. You can also use it as a dangler. It's my voodoo dangler. Uh, gives you, you know, cross draw, dangler cross draw, which is uncommon. Um, you know, got a, a nice face plate on the front <clears throat> with our logo. I put drain holes in this one. I usually don't, but if the client asks for them, I will. Okay? And there's that one. Uh, what else we got? What else do we have? <laughs> Aha! This is for a different client. Okay? This is uh, my uh, LMF, light multifunction. The BMF is the basic multifunction. This is the LMF, light multifunction, okay? 
This is my take on the Raymere's Bush Lure. It's a Bush Lure style knife with modern materials, <laughs> a little bit modern, more modern geometry, um, really sharp spine, super steel. Um, this is uh, CPM 3V. Uh, and you can see how he did the handle on this one. This is toxic green and black. He put those scallops in there for the client. This fellow lives in Canada. And I tell you what, man, I, I really like this knife. I might have him do to my spear too what he did to this handle. I really like it. And it's comfortable and grippy, right? It's very comfortable. He has great Coke bottle style handles, right? And with this, these scallops and these, you know, slices in there, very grippy, right? And then there's the sheath system for it. Voodoo Dangler. He can also put a clip on here or a Molly Lock. Um, he's got a... Ooh. Ooh. Ceramic. Right? A ceramic hone. Okay? Great for honing in the field. Ceramics are great. They work very well. Okay? Um, it's like a... Basically, it's like a solid strop. Right? It, they... They both sharpen a little bit differently, a strop and a ceramic, but you get that same razor sharp edge out of both of them. Alright, that's a client, but I'll, 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 I gotta call him back. Um, so there's that toxic green stuff, right? Really like this, liking this knife. Um, this this is a pyro plug right here. It's for, uh, you know, a bow drill divot. For a bow drill. Okay? Which, his pyro plugs really work well. Very, very little friction there. Right? Uh, let me show you something real quick. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> um, this, this is, um, this is my uh, Delta Whiskey Infinity the LT Wright builds for me, okay? Um, and we're going to be doing a run in CPM 3V of this. But you see what I did here? I put a precision bearing in there inside the bow drill divot. These come with bow drill divots, right? But I went and I put a, a precision wheel bearing in there and that provides no friction at all, right? When you put that, uh, let me see if I can find it. When you put that spindle in there, right? And it's spinning back and forth, no friction, right? That gives you a lot more heat at the butt end for your coal, right? It works, works well. So I just wanted to show that. Just fit it in there somehow. Uh, that, that is not made by Mike Wallace, it's made by LT Wright. It's a different knife, okay? Um, what else we got? What else we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Okay, so there's this one, right? Oh, there's a Spear 1, right? I want a Spear 1. This is his, I mean a Spear 2 from him. This is a Spear 1. Uh, this was built, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago. Very nice hunting knife, hunting, maybe some bushcraft, camp lore, you know, camp chores, utility, uh, you can use it as a combat knife, uh, very, very comfortable, right, uh, this is a full, full flat grind, uh, you can also do a saber or whatever, you have to talk to him, okay, um, clip point, this is his design, right, very nice knife. And then the sheath system I built for it is, who knows? Oh, here it is. Ah, this has got one of our, got my Special Forces crest on there. Pretty cool. Um, you guys who are, are in SF, uh, you know, I got several guys who are in SF that I built sheaths for. Uh, if you want me to put a crest on one of your sheaths, I can do it. All right, so that's it for that. 
here is my LMF, right? So here's the difference between this LMF and mine. Is you know it's different. Mine's a little smaller. Mine's a little thinner, right? I like thin steel knives usually, right? The, the texture on the uh, scales is different. Um, you know, like I said, he can customize it any way you want. Make it a little bigger, a little smaller, bigger belly, no belly, whatever, right? He's a very good custom knife maker. Um, what else we got? Oh, okay. This is my, this is my, one of my favorite neckers, okay? This one's actually my favorite, okay? This is my Little Hawk design that from Brian Sells at English Mountain Knives builds this knife. Okay, it's a Little Hawk Necker. He builds the knife, he sends it to me, and you and I work on a sheath, and it's a knife and sheath system. That's how I do things, right? It's uh, the best of both custom worlds in a nice custom system, right? This is uh, Field Mouse, Mike Wallace Field Mouse. Uh, I love this Necker. This thing is comfortable, strong. This is uh, CPM 154. Very nice knife. Very nice. Great bush crafter. This thing feather sticks like no tomorrow, right? Very, very, I mean razor sharp. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, <laughs> no, no pressure at all. Look at that. Oh, man. CPM 3V and, and CPM 154, they sharpen up like nobody's business. If you know how to sharpen, these things are incredible, this steel, right? And it stays that way for a while. Uh, it's a sheath system. This also has a dangler attachment, uh, flip-out ferro rod, one of my standard compasses. It's a Necker, right? Uh, I think that might be it, guys. Here's the sheath for my LMF. Got a ceramic, right? I just help. I just hold it on there with uh, Ranger bands, right? Didn't feel like making a holder, and that works just fine. Okay. Uh, that's my buddy Bob does that all the time. If you say something incredible, he'll go. The Grizz, right? Okay, um, I think that's it. Let's put these knives back now. This Kadora covered nylon, crap. It's just crap, right? I don't know any of the other makers if you guys use this stuff. I think it's garbage. It peels off, it, it you know, loosens over time. It's hard to get the edges right, it frays, then you got to burn the edges, it's a pain in the ass, right? So, I, this is the only time I've ever used it, and I'll never use it again. So, okay, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. This, is, this has been all about Mike Wallace's knives, and how it works between me and him, and or him and I. Uh, it's not much different than it works between myself and other makers as well. They build the knife, right? You work with them, they build the knife, they send it to me, I build the sheath system, right? And it's all custom. Whatever you want is what you get. And provided it can be done. I mean, I've had guys ask me to put, you know, a half inch by six inch ferro rod on a knife like this, right? It just doesn't work, guys. Now, I'll tell you real quick, it don't work. It's not going to work. Well, how come? Well, it's going to be bigger than the damn sheath, right? There's no way to attach it. It cumbersome, heavy, bulky. Uh, don't get me started. Just like that pancake sheath dilemma, right? Anyway. That's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you.